Hi, my name is Hannah and I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> this is my first video I've ever made, but I just felt like God put it on my heart to share my testimony of how I was saved by Jesus. Um, saved from New Age spirituality mostly, out there for others so I can just spread his love and just talk about what Jesus has done for me. Um, I know there's hundreds of other videos on YouTube already, people's testimonies and stories, especially relating to New Age spirituality. So I hope I can just inspire one person. If I do that, I've done my job. But I just want to get this out there and, you know, show people that we don't have to struggle anymore and we can be free. So I am now... 27 I will be 28 in two months and I found God 10 months ago so I was 26 when I found God and I grew up Catholic um, I went to church with my parents a couple times a year it was not an every week thing but I was homeschooled um, religion so I had a book that went along with the Bible and it had all the stories of the Old Testament and New Testament and talked about Jesus's life and I would do that every Sunday with my mom and I did like that I enjoyed you know reading about the Bible and talking about Jesus but that was kind of as far as my faith went I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus um, that was just it. I made all my sacraments in the Catholic Church and then moved on. So wouldn't really call myself a Christian or have any faith at all growing up besides just the occasional going to church and doing the religion classes. And then I went to college and whatever faith I already didn't have was totally out the window because, you know, in college you just do what everyone else does and I started partying, I started drinking, I was dating, um, messing around, doing a lot of stuff I shouldn't have done, smoking weed, just a whole bunch of stuff, right? Sinning, lots of sin, 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 sin. So no faith, no God, God was not in my life. Fast forward to 22, when I was 22, the guy I was dating, who I lived with at the time, was killed. And this was the hardest thing I've ever been through. It was very traumatic for me. And I questioned God a lot. I wondered if there was a God, and if there was, why would he do this, right? Why would he take this wonderful, important person in my life away from me? So again, whatever little faith I had by that point, totally gone. No faith. I just spiraled down. And before that point, I already had a lot of anxiety. You know, I was a nervous mess. Um, and then after my boyfriend's death, couple that with depression and just anger, a lot of anger at the situation and his death. Um, anger at God, angry at the person that killed him, angry at myself, you know, left with all those uncertainties of not saying goodbye and what do I do now? Just all of that grief, right? I had no faith. So I dived into New Age spirituality, mostly mediumship. And I want to talk a lot about this because I was totally deceived by mediums and the second that my boyfriend passed away I thought I need to hear from him I need to know that he's okay and that he's in heaven and he's safe right so I found a medium um, in my hometown to go to and the man seemed lovely I mean he was a 50 something year old dad he was very positive and you know the session presented itself very uplifting um the medium did 
touch on a lot of things that were accurate. You know, I gave this guy no information about myself other than my name and he had a lot of things spot on. So that made it more believable for me and I just dived right in even deeper and I got more lost in mediumship and that kind of led me to law of attraction and tarot cards and more meditation. I was trying to open my third eye and um, yoga and manifesting all that stuff, you know, your chakras and I, I don't even know. I <laughs> I've tried to block it out of my mind as much as I can, but it's still part of my story. So I need to share it. I need to talk about it. But all that stuff, I was doing it. Whatever it was, I was doing it. I would go to mediums every year um, on his anniversary of his death just to hear from him. And, you know, I thought this was helping my grief but it wasn't. I still was depressed and anxious and just miserable. I, I tried to be very uplifting and positive and I've always considered myself an upbeat, energetic person, but there was just always something on me. And I didn't know at the time that it was the devil. It was the devil that had slipped in through this door that I had opened that I never should have opened, you know? So I was getting all these spiritual attacks and just feeling very miserable all the time. So now we're fast forwarding to 26, which was last year. Um, I left my hometown and moved to Florida and, you know, had a fresh start after I graduated from school with my master's degree. I up and left and wanted to you know, start afresh and I moved down here. Everything on paper was wonderful. I've got my master's degree, I've got my dream job, I'm in Florida, it's warm, I'm out of the cold. Um, I had a new boyfriend at this point who, God bless him, he's an angel sent from God in my life. Um, but I had great friends, you know, everything on paper was wonderful but I was still depressed. I was still into new age spirituality, doing all this stuff, but I had so much anxiety. I would cry myself to sleep so many nights and half the time I didn't even know why. I couldn't even pinpoint why I was sad. And it took getting fired from my job, um, which is another story, but I got fired on a Friday and I went to a medium that same night to kind of get some guidance because I thought the universe is going to talk to me and tell me what my next step is, right? All this crap that sounds so real. And nothing happened. I didn't get any messages. And I felt worse. I felt worse because I got no clarity from the universe. So the next day, and this is, you know, kind of what what starts my journey with God. The next day I go to my boyfriend's house and my boyfriend, mind you, is the most Christ-like, godly person I've ever met. Um, he's just, he's got the Holy Spirit in him. That's, that's just what it is. He's a true believer and a true follower of Christ. And I love that about him, but also hated that about him because I was possessed. I was gone. I was not there but i i saw his light and i wanted that and it inspired me i wanted to be like him but i didn't know that that was the path i had to step into you know i didn't know that i had to rid myself of all the negative toxic stuff and go into the light so the next day after i was fired from that job i went to my boyfriend's and i had this major meltdown and I just, I bawled my eyes out and I told them, you know, why, why am I sad? Why am I miserable? What is wrong with me? My life is wonderful. I mean, yeah, I was fired from this job, but I still have my master's degree. I'm still a therapist. You know, I'm in Florida. I've moved my life down here. Life is wonderful. Why am I miserable? 
And I remember him just saying super calmly to me, you know, Hannah, did you ever think what you're doing, what you're trying to use as your coping mechanisms, maybe they're not working and maybe they're harming you. And it just, it, it clicked. It clicked that for four years since my previous boyfriend's death, I was just filling this void. I was just trying to cope with all these ways and I was lost. I was so lost. And that missing piece that I needed the whole time, it was Jesus. And I had no idea. I was just searching for happiness and joy and all these false, fake, man-made ways. But none of it could fill that hole like Jesus could. So anyway, I <laughs> agreed with him and it, it finally clicked in my mind. And he said, why don't you go to church with me tomorrow? And tomorrow was Sunday, the next day was Sunday. And I hadn't been to church in over 10 years. I didn't even know what church was like. And my boyfriend was going to just a non-denominational Christian church here in Florida. He was go every Sunday by himself. Um, so I did and I went to church and let me tell you the sermon that the pastor preached about spot on perfect for me exactly what i needed to hear he talked about when your life is a mess you gotta just give it to god give it to god and let him take care of it you know surrender stop trying to control everything and he will guide you through it was exactly what i needed to hear and ever since that day i've just i've given my heart to jesus and i've let go of all those other things and I've learned that they were really holding me back. I mean, I've never felt the joy that I do now. I've never felt just this overwhelming sense of peace and comfort that I do. And it's all because of him. I mean, I was totally different and I'm brand new. I'm a new person in Christ. There's nothing else that explains it. It's like, I was one way and now I'm a different way. And the only thing that changed or that came in between those two ways was Jesus, you know? So, man, I just, I owe my life to him. He saved me. He saved me from just carnal ways, just earthly, worldly ways. And I would have been stuck in that forever. I would have lived my whole life trying to be a medium or being a medium or you know doing all this stuff that's just ego centered it's all ego centered and that's the problem with this law of attraction junk it's all based in ego what how can i manipulate the situation for my benefit right and that's not how we're supposed to live you know god wants us to be abundant of course but there's a thing called God's will. God has a will for us. There's certain things he wants for us and certain things he doesn't, and it's only up to him. And when we try to manipulate and control the system, it's just gonna backfire and it's not gonna be true enjoyment and true fulfillment. You know, I found in the past 10 months that my fulfillment comes from Jesus, not from anything in this world, it's, it's just from Jesus. I tried for so many years to find joy and to get joy from relationships, jobs, friends, family, where I lived, what I did, you know, accomplishments. None of those things can bring us joy. They can't bring us true joy and true peace. You know, they're just temporary fixes. We have to know who we are in Christ and we have to look to the cross and see what he did for us. I mean, the most sinless man died for us. He took our place on the cross so that we don't have to struggle. We can give everything to him. All of our struggles, all of our fear, our anxiety, our anger, bitterness, all of it, we can lay it at his feet. 
and give it up to him and let him let him work through it for us so i've i've just i've been a new person ever since i found jesus and my heart is just on fire for him i just i want to help other people find his love and i i thank god every day for sending me my boyfriend so he could be my angel to lead me back to god everyone needs an angel just to show them the truth you know jesus is the way the truth the life so that's it i just i wanted to share my story and i wanted to get on here and talk about what jesus has done for me how he's changed me and i mean ever since i found him my anxiety my depression it's it's gone it's completely gone um I don't talk about this very often, but I suffered from trichotillomania, which if you've never heard of it, it's a condition where you pull out your eyelashes subconsciously. You rip them out, either from boredom, from stress, from nervousness, a whole bunch of things, right? And I did it for 10 years. 10 years, I had no eyelashes from anxiety and now I have full eyelashes I mean Jesus is the proof the proof is it's real it's it's visible it's physical and it's spiritual I mean he changes your heart first before he changes the external things he works internally to change externally and I mean this is just the way to live it's to live for God, to live for Jesus, and to advance his kingdom. All I want to do now is just spread his love. Love God and love your neighbors. You know, that's what the Bible says. So I hope this helps someone out there in the world. And just know that God is for you. You don't have to struggle. He's, he's paid the debt for you. You know, you can be free. You can totally be free and let it all go and give your life to Jesus. It's, it's the best thing I've ever done. So thank you. Have a good day.